So I first came to Boston in the late 80s. That was when Chinatown was kind of a dangerous area because the red light district was right around here. And so I didn't have like a great first impression of Boston Chinatown. I eventually moved here. I live a couple blocks away and I was struck by how entirely different Chinatown was. A lot of neighborhood changes, yeah. a lot of um, restaurants coming and going and people adapting to the new Yep. population here so over the last 15 years or so the restaurants have all changed so much and become I think a little bit more attuned to uh, current tastes and then I was especially like impressed again with when you opened Shoujo because it was the first non-traditional Asian restaurant but it was still Asian here in Chinatown and I thought man that's gutsy wow this looks amazing I haven't been here in so long now I remember when this was best little restaurant. Mm -hmm. So tell me what's here now. We kept it in the family. So my father um, originally took the restaurant back in 82. Uh, he converted it to best little restaurant. In 2016, I took it over. BLR stands yeah. for best little restaurant. And we do traditional Chinese food that we grew up on. A little bit elevated in terms of uh, methods for today's diner. Have you seen the customers change? Like when we first reopened, we saw a lot of the traditional families coming in right. and getting very confused. Yeah. What's been really fun is seeing the neighborhood people that are the non-Asian people coming in. Yeah. You know, we focus a little bit more on the cleaner Chinese food. Yeah. I assume these aren't dishes from the original menu. They are interpretations of dishes that would be served here before, dishes that I grew up on, and Chinatown classics. Okay. So this is going to be a whole trout. Uh, Chinese culture is very important to eat animals that are head to toe. But we deboned it so that it's a little bit easier custom to be ate if you're not used to eating bones. Right. So when I was growing up, I literally did not eat non-Chinese food. When I went to visit friends, and they had sleepovers, they would serve, you know, whatever, American food, and I was always really confused. First, I'm confused because there's no chopsticks. And then, I'm just sitting there, and my, my friend's mom says, are you okay? You know, what do you need? And I said, there's no rice. And she said, no, but there's potatoes. And I was like, that's so? not the same. Like, so? There's no rice. Similar to me, um, I never had any other Chinese food except for traditional Chinese food. Yeah. When I was um, in college, uh, my friends introduced me to General Gao's chicken yeah. and pork fried rice. Right. And my friends that were non-Asian kept on asking me, like, how do you grow up Chinese, and eating Chinese eat, food, <laughs> and not eat General yeah. Gao's chicken? Yeah. Um, and, and that's, I think, you know, the culture of growing up in the States, eating traditional food growing up, and there's a whole other version of that cuisine that I was never exposed to. Right. So this used to be called Ho Yun Ting Too. Okay. So this was actually my first job when I was like, first official job is 10 years old. We had the ducks and chickens hanging in the window. Yes, I remember that. Um, so my job was fairly simple, which was I'd ask you what you wanted, and then I'd go pick up the animal, put yeah, it on the scale. A, I wonder if I ever came here, mm -hmm. and you may have helped me. I may have helped you back <laughs> in the day before we even knew each other, exactly. yes. it was. Uh, and here we are, wow. I think we're really lucky in Boston. I think it's a, a pretty great restaurant community. Whether it's something like ingredients or where you're getting something, or it's just like business knowledge or, you know, how to move forward in those things. What are you doing with labor right now? How much are we paying people as a community? Are we all on the same page? Wow, that was wow, amazing. What's this? This is our version of a chicken and waffle. So we wanted to really pay homage to what Chinatown was and uh, the Hong Kong egg puffs. Yeah. There used to be a lady that was on the street corner um, at Ivana Loft. Right. She's Not there anymore? You know, she's there sometimes. The same lady that made these when I was a kid. Five spice uh, maple syrup and a little bit of a uh, Szechuan rub on the chicken. Mm -hmm. Nice you like that? <laughs> Live here, work here, own a business here. I mean, starting from the time you were about 10. What's the community like for you? Uh, the community has changed a lot. Before it was very independent. This is my storefront and this is my whole world. Now there's a Chinatown Business Association that I'm a part of. Um, that you know, we go in front of the city, find out what the new policies are. I would say Chinatown's a little bit more unified now, um, and it's more uh, working towards a common goal of preserving Chinatown, uh, 
uh, while working together and having like a proper representation and proper voice uh, with the government.